they spent some time in a very nice writer's colony in, in Switzerland, um, near Lake Geneva. And um, there's a little winery, a little village not very far away where one of the big winemakers is. And they have a curious local um, um, affectation. There are scarecrows all over the village. The village of scarecrows. In the village of scarecrows, every house has one. And some belong to no house. Stand there meeting the cars that sometimes slow down. And no scarecrow looks like another. Some are tall, some small. One presents a smiling visage, another a scowl. One is the priest, another is the policeman, a third is the village madman, and guards the vintner's cave that then graces the label of his best wine, which the creator of the scarecrows drinks free every night to inspire him to new forms of scarecrow which he tests on his two pet crows, then plants before dawn. Um, Scottish poet friend of mine said, you always have to have the decency to give the audience the three poem warning. <laughs> three more and I stop. Pan on the Pink Bridge. I saw Pan today on the pink bridge, waving his red boots. I heard him before I saw him, tootling his flute up there over the jewel carriageway, with his cars beetling to Fermoy, to Port Leisha, to Dublin. It was a Chinese jig he was playing, and my feet, like his hidden hooves, were dancing so much I had to stop driving, then get out to prance on the hard shoulder alongside the others bouncing there, howling out in tune to the notes of Pan, who slowly began to be swallowed by fog, through which his muffled music continued, less Chinese now, more steps Russian, until with a final flourish it stopped. After some minutes we rejoined our cars, drove away peering through the murk, glancing in our mirrors, listening hard, Grateful for this visit of great God Pan. A history of glass blowing. The records show that in Shanghai, at the end of the Yuan Dynasty, the year 1364, a glass blower blew a mermaid that came to life and swam away. And in Cologne in 1531, a team of glass blowers blew an orchestra, instruments and all, and these played. Then in Hokkaido in 1846, a blind monk blew his own Buddha to pray to, and the next day he was able to see. In Natchez in 1901, a glass blower blew a paddle boat with gamblers in it, one of them lying dead. And in Oaxaca in 1929, a small version of the Sierra Madre was blown, with gold diggers on its lower step, slopes, and the whole town filled with gold. In Letterkenny in 1965, a woman blew a flock of glass sheep, wool and all, each of them with a tinkly ba. In 1993, in Set, the harbour glass floor blew a lighthouse with its own light, and in 2004, in Timishwara, Three glasses blew a new solar system that they let float up and away. <laughs> I go back to Donegal uh, as often as I can. And um, I come from a little village uh, right on the Atlantic. And last time I was up there, I went for a walk down to the sea. And uh, there was a plaque in Irish and English detailing a local legend that I didn't know about about a piper. There was apparently a cave that they thought was a fairy's cave, and they didn't know how deep into the earth it went. And the piper said, I'll go in there blowing my pipe, and you'll know how deep it is there. Anyway, it's really nice to be back in Limerick, and this is a great venue. And a lovely occasion, thank you. The Piper's Cave. 
Young girls will be old women when I return, when I return. Young lambs will be old sheep when I come back again. So sang the red-haired piper as he vanished into the cave, playing a frolicsome jig followed by a bouncy polka. And he told his three friends they trek in by his music, seeping up through the black earth and the green grass. They danced and they sang, they careered about, thinking him the bravest piper that had ever lived, here in the good parish of Clonmany or elsewhere. And when a reel turned them left towards the sea, they pranced that way, gladly, and a gull flew low overhead, joining in their singing, and a crow almost caught in tune, until the music morphed into a slow air, so sad the three began weeping, then all went silent. They were two miles from where they'd started, just in the townland of Anna. They shouted the piper's name, no answer. They appealed to the fairies, as much response as from the trees. They trooped back to the Puchin, raising glasses to their brave friend, writing together a song for him. Young lambs were old women when he returned, returned. Young girls were old sheep when he came back again.